So in this video, we're going to talk about something that's kind of esoteric. It doesn't really have a lot of applications in Chemistry 1 and Chemistry 2, typically we gloss over it, but I do find it very fascinating. So full disclosure, you don't actually need to watch this video, but I find this topic very interesting. So this is the idea of diprotic and triprotic acids. Now, as you may guess, the di on the tri here tells you how many acidic hydrogens there are. So for a diprotic acid, we have two acidic hydrogens, and we would write it as H2A goes back and forth to H plus AQ plus AJ minus AQ, and AJ minus AQ goes back and forth to H plus AQ plus A minus two AQ. So this would be the first deprotonation with its own equilibrium constant, and the second deprotonation with its own equilibrium constant. Now, the first even protonation may be a strong acid. So in the example, this H2SO4, that's a strong acid, has an irreversibility error. But for every single diprotic acid, this second deprotonation is always a weak acid. The reason being is that up here we just have a positive and negative charge. Down here we have a positive and a negative two. They're much better bound to each other, so it's hard to get them apart. Now, triprotic, same idea. We have three acidic protons. So we have H3A. And I'm not going to bother with the AQs anymore because you should know they're all aqueous, already aqueous. H2A minus. The H2A minus goes back to H plus plus A minus two, HA minus two. And HA minus two goes back and forth to H plus plus A minus three. Now, like this, the first one may be a strong. Some people classify phosphoric acid, H3PO4, as a strong acid, so they would say the first deprotonation is irreversible. But the second, and most definitely the third, both constitute weak acid behavior. So, examples of this where they're both reversible, H2SO3, sulfurous acid. Examples where this is reversible for all three, phosphorous acid, H3PO3. What's going to change when we titrate these things is going to be the shapes of the curves. So let's start simple. Let's just do the diprotic. Now we're going to say for sake of argument that the first protonation is reversible. So something like uh, sulfurous acid, H2SO3. It's going to start out looking just like a normal weak acid titration. We're going to get this shape here. We're going to have a downward curvature and an upward curvature, and we're going to have a midpoint. And this time, our first equivalence point. And this first equivalence point represents where we converted all of our H2A, sorry, H2A into HA minus. This midpoint here, freaky as it is, the pH will equal the first. Ka for that first deprotonation. So if we know the pH at this midpoint, this first midpoint, we can figure out the Ka, the first deprotonation. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. You notice here I got a pH scale, but I don't specify seven. Where the second deprotonation, begin, deprotonation begins depends on the strength of that second acid. So something like sulfurous acid may still be in the acidic range when you're titrating it. Um, but especially with H2SO4, when you get to that HSO4 minus, that second deprotonation, you're still acidic. There are some acids though that when you get to the second deprotonation, you are strongly under basic conditions. This would really rather act as a conjugate base than it would a parent acid. So we can't give you any generalities here, but what we can say is that for the second deprotonation, it's gonna look basically the same. We're gonna have a second equivalence point, a second midpoint, that's gonna sit halfway between the first equivalence point and the second equivalence point. And the pH here is also gonna equal the pKa, this time of the second deprotonation. Now, once we, once we get beyond the second equivalence point, we are nothing but at A minus two, the um, second deprotonation, both hydrogens missing. And everything beyond this is base control. So we're gonna see basically two weak acid titrations for a diprotic, and then we're gonna see our normal basic behavior. When it comes to the triprotic, as you may have already guessed, we get a third weak acid titration. So we have a third equivalence point, a third midpoint, and we can once again say that the pH here equals the pKa of the third one. So we're just gonna switch this to H3A, H2A minus one, HA minus two, A minus three. We're going to see what look like three weak acid titrations. If you're doing a triprotic, guarantee you this one's in the basic region. 
debatable if this one's in the basic region. The first one will be the only one that's in the truly acidic regions, but our three midpoints correspond to our three pKa's. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool about this. So, if you ever do a diprotic or triprotic acid titration, you measure the pH versus volume of base added. This is going to be end up putting, this is what you're going to end up getting when you do your titration curves.